Tepa Fellow now. I'm in the Integrated Field Sciences group uh, here within our research department. Uh, I've been here in Pioneer and Corteva for about 18 years now. I have a, a long history with the station here in Woodland. Um, I came to the station here in 2001 uh, when uh, our Heritage Pioneer Company first decided to start working on drought tolerance in corn. And I had done some work in my previous postdoctoral research on uh, maize drought research, and so I had some background in that area. And I was always very excited and, about the opportunity to join Pioneer. So I was working in Cleveland, Ohio at the time with another company in more crop protection and uh, had an opportunity to join Pioneer then. And so I uh, came over here, moved my family and, and, and myself over here, and we started trying to set up our protocols for doing drought research here at Pioneer in, in Woodland. And so it was interesting. We had a lot of things to do because the, 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 the organization here had not really done yield trials on corn before. Historically, the station had been primarily a sunflower breeding station, so we had lots of experience from growing sunflowers and doing that research. But to do the work on corn, I had to kind of reinvent the wheel a little bit, and we had to bring in some new equipment and new processes, and it worked out very well. We started in 2001 and uh, made some progress and continued to, to develop the procedures and uh, got very good at developing our procedures over the years. Well, the Woodland Research Center itself was initiated back uh, considerably before I came even, back in the early 80s, I believe. Uh, and because of the, the beautiful environment here in the Central Valley, California, uh, the company knew you could grow really good sunflower seed here for sunflower production that we could sell around the world. So that was the primary, uh, basically, an impetus for, for setting up the Woodland Research Center and, and the sunflower production plant pretty much simultaneously years and years ago. So they had a production plant to grow the, the, the fantastic uh, sunflower varieties and they had a breeding operation here to do the research. So it was a very nice integrated approach for sunflower research. Uh, so that was the original uh, beginning of Woodland many years ago. And then through the years, of course, the company knew that this environment was very consistent, hot and dry every summer. And so that's when in the, in the late 90s, when the company was getting more serious about doing more uh, research in, in drought tolerance on corn, uh, some of the scientists said, wow, we know that we have this research center in Woodland, California that's very dry in the summertime and we could probably do really good drought research there. So they started uh, recruiting folks like me and others to start working on uh, drought research in corn. So we established this station. The first year they did corn research here was in 1999 uh, for, for drought. And then uh, after a year or two of a little bit of preliminary work that I came on in 2001. Uh, simultaneously, we also established a center down in, in Veluco, Chile, just south of Santiago about an hour. And that allowed us to do this drought research year round because they're in a different uh, hemisphere and uh, their, their seasons are, are counter to ours, of course. So that was a, really the beginning of our really good drought research network that we set up in Pioneer. My name is Tim Rodenberger. I'm a research associate here at the Woodland Research Station. I consider myself part of the history here in Woodland, so I've been around for a little while and um, made a lot of great relationships. So I've worked at the Woodland Research Center since 2011. Um, back then, we they were getting a new building, so there have been a lot of re renovations. Um, they built the new cold room. Uh, we have a lot more space in our warehouse and, and our cubicle area has improved. Getting new equipment, um, for example, one of the processes we've gone through several evolutions here photometry. We started with an actual wooden box on a on a three wheeled baby cart, and we've evolved that several iterations to um, from locally made versions. With you know, it's just gotten better every every year. Um, we also had like a big cart with six ear photometry boxes on it on an old Hagee sprayer. And um, that was a lot of fun going through the field. Um, it had like a boat motor on it and you would like kind of steer it like a tricycle. It was interesting. And we were able to um, really advance phenotypic data collection through all the iterations that we've done. Uh, my name is Julie Lenars. I'm the Precision Phenotyping Validation Lead. 
uh, relationship with the station. I've, I've been here for about 10 years, and so um, started working and helping out at some of the urophotometry work that we've been developing at the station. Kind of moved into the breeding world at some point to help support a, a breeding program. And um, from there on, I went to kind of the IFS space, um, developing kind of some precision phenotyping tools uh, for, for IFS and then um, went back into kind of the, the breeding world here for the last year or so. So, I mean, Woodland's been critical to the development of the Aquamax products. Um, we have a consistent drought that we get year after year um, in Woodland since we have close to zero rainfall pretty much during the entire season. And so um, the huge success is we're just being able to provide you know, adequate, high quality data to make those critical decisions to advance those uh, those lines forward. We use a, a lot of technology here at the station. We, we uh, I think there is a lot of areas where probably we are at the cutting edge of technologies. We are also exploring new technologies. So sometimes a lot of these technologies that we have here probably are not going anywhere. <laughs> but at least we're gaining experience and we know what, what, what is going to happen or how to handle those type of technologies and what, what works and what doesn't work. So that, that's part of how we, we, we approach the technology. So we, we apply technology to a lot of our processes, but also we have a lot of technology in the field that we are learning uh, about it and we are getting experience with it. On a daily basis, we are you know, generating systems that make not only our jobs easier, but people, other people in the company, um, and that is translating to helping the customers and the consumers and farmers who both use our products and moving forward with the tech innovation that will become primary to making their lives easier. So I think it's crucial for us to be on that forefront. There's some basic technology that is used very sharply here, for example irrigation management. Okay, um, So it's simple technology are used very efficiently, especially guided by the drought experience. So that's one piece of, of the technology here. Uh, and the other part that Woodland staff is doing a very good job is in digitizing, digitalizing what they do in the fields, uh, um, working with images. And this is a result of a mix of, uh, in a diverse mix of capabilities and, and groups working here. So again, this is a very unique center. I've worked with members of this station, Javier Padilla, and I've made a few other connections while I was here as well um, to learn on some of the ways that they digitalized and automated a lot of the data collection processes, but also some of the technologies that they're doing here. So right now I would say I've been learning a lot from, from the Woodland Research Center and it's been a really eye-opening experience. I did not expect to see so much multi-crop diversity um, and the level of management and on all the plots is, is remarkable, just the level of, of precision from um, how much they manipulate the environment to the level of, of detail and the data collection that happens. Um, it, it's, it's an amazing amount of work with, without a whole lot of people um, and it's really interesting to see how they've leveraged the technology and automation to make that a little easier and faster. Yeah, so my name is uh, Jose Luis Hernandez, I'm a research director. Uh, I'm part of a group within the R&D organization, uh, leading the Global Research Seed Development Group. These are exciting times, so Corteva is putting out their uh, business proposition, uh, vision that I don't think any other company has. So these are really exciting times just to be engaged on uh, farmers, customers, consumers, starting to get into the food, food uh, area, just you know, connecting the farms uh, with the table. To me, that's, uh, that's amazing. We're still figuring out you know, how to get to, to, to that end point, but the journey, um, it's going to be uh, exciting. It's, it's, it's great to be more involved with uh, other Corteva employees uh, here. Alpharex is a, uh, one of the seed brands under the multi-channel seed uh, business unit in Corteva. And uh, we specialize in alfalfa and 
other forages uh, that we sell uh, not only here in North America, but we sell uh, around the globe as well. Actually, I started working here last year with the integrated field scientist that was stationed here to do some uh, crop protection testing on the property here in Woodland, uh, primarily uh, of, uh, crop response testing to new chemistries we're developing and uh, nitrogen management testing. The Woodland Station is a multidiscipline facility capable of doing various sorts of testing from the traditional uh, um, corn uh, breeding and uh, sunflower production to uh, as well as doing um, basic field research in crop protection chemistries. If one were to uh, speculate what the station uh, would be like in five years, um, we know that within Corteva now we're looking at uh, some new, new emphasis on innovation and incubator sites or incubator farms that would allow you to do integrated research in lots of categories that are related to crop production. So I think I think we, we, we have an opportunity here at the station to, to be a place where we can host a lot of different uh, development, a lot of different uh, environments, a lot of different technologies. So I think it's a, an ideal place for people to come and visit and get exposure to those uh, different uh, uh, technologies or, or environments that are going to be present here. At least when it comes to the farm of the future, I am thinking of better tracking, more sensors, more ability to um, have real-time data. Um, obviously, our processes are all standardized and very efficient. I mean, there's constant innovation, but we're to a place where um, we can really accomplish what we do and, and execute sampling and, and good data collection, um, just with more ease and more efficiency. And I think we're getting there, and in five years, I think we'll really be streamlined. So we obviously don't have a breeding program here anymore, um, but what we're doing from a breeding perspective is we're moving into the precision phenotyping space. And so this is developing traits for, for drones or, or utilizing phones in the field to take images, or even um, if you think even more into the future, ultimately having maybe robots going through, driving through the fields and collecting data. And so what we're really pushing for and what my job entails is really getting those projects um, working going forward, uh, making sure that we achieve our goals to get some of these things implemented in the field um, moving forward into the future. Yeah, so in some of those meetings, it, and it was interesting, it was kind of being like an innovation center, right? And, and being that, and I talked a little bit about that earlier, about being on the cutting edge of agriculture and, and technology and, and, and technology it could be digital technology it could be genetics it could be you know uh, natural resistance to things whatever that that might look like um, I know there's a lot of things like that going on here at the station and so I think yeah kind of being that center of expertise for that cutting-edge agriculture piece I think that's what I'd like to see more than me. Um, Oh, in the next five years, I could see um, a lot of uh, really good things happening. Um, I, I would, I'm excited about the potential for expanding uh, some field research here, which would allow IFS scientists, myself and others, to get a, a better grasp of the use uh, and, and, and activity of our new products, as well as our uh, ability to measure and, um, and, and rate uh, different aspects of crop development uh, via digital means. Um, and I think in the next five years that, that, uh, that we're going to be way ahead of where we are now and the Woodland Field Station is going to be a big part of what makes that happen. Well, I think there's a lot of potential here in Woodland. Um, certainly 
with Corteva and R&D driving more multi-crop, multi-platform, it's amazing to see how much is going on here, not just in seeds, but in crop protection and also digital. And those are being the three big pillars in Corteva. Woodland has all three. And so I think Woodland is in a really unique spot to be able to be a key, um, key component to those integrated solutions, not just for um, helping our own research, but also to be able to translate those ultimately to the farmer. So I think a lot of that is going to start here in Woodland. Um, I mean, again, because of the diverse people and capabilities that we have here, because Woodland is again in the middle with breeding and GRSD and seed production, um, there's a lot of things that can happen here, especially putting things together, you know, because one is seed, one is crop protection uh, and production systems. And the other thing also is we are located in an area in California state where, I mean, corn and soy is not the, the, the most important crops, but vegetables and fruit. And, and probably that's our next markets that somehow we will approach from a more integrated uh, service or products, not seed and chemicals, but solutions. So, and now this is the new market for, for this company. This, this place, uh, first they need to continue doing what, they're, what they are doing because they are short and mid-term contributions that we need to keep, keep harvesting for, for, for the company. The vision for this site, this, is gonna, this site is going to be kind of a connecting hub for what we are doing in many locations in terms of uh, seed production, but also uh, phenotyping and getting data and traits. Uh, so in the future, uh, what Corteva is going to be challenged with is how do we put all these products and technology into the right mix in order to offer a great service for our customers and ultimately for uh, consumers, which is uh, going to be all, all of us. So that's kind of the vision for this side, be that enabler, that connector, that you know, put everything, all the technologies that we have out there in the different R&D locations and how to package them well uh, for our customers.